Hey everybody, Cody Rourke here. Just wanted to say before we get into our video, the Denver Broncos offensive defense against the Las Vegas Raiders from this past Sunday. I wanted to tell you that I'm very excited to announce that I have partnered with DraftKings Sportsbook. They're the number one rated sportsbook app in the United States. And with them, you can rest assured knowing that your money is safe and secure and in reliable hands here. And one of the things I do when I play DraftKings Sportsbook on the weekends for NFL action, I like to take part in their money line. I like taking part in some of their live betting where you can bet on what's happening live in the game. So for example, next week the Broncos play the Miami Dolphins. And if you want to bet in the game that on a certain drive that Drew Locke will throw a touchdown pass, guess what? You can bet on that. And if it happens, you get a win money. And ladies and gentlemen, you, you can sign up today. In the description box below, there is a link. You can click on it. You can sign up and use promo code Rourke. That's R-O-A-R-K, promo code Rourke, when you sign up today. And you can receive up to a deposit bonus of up to $1,000, folks. you got to get in on the action with DraftKings Sportsbook today. I use them every day, and I want you to now use them when you put your money on the line with any kind of sportsbook. DraftKings Sportsbook is the way for me and this YouTube channel here, Cody Rourke NFL. All right, Broncos country, I want you guys to do me a favor right now, okay? Before we do this, I want you to sit down. I want you to pour yourself a beverage. This is a therapy session. we got to get through some of the bad here uh, from the Broncos special teams and offensive side of the ball, which, it, you know, there was a lot of bad in Sunday's 37-12 to loss, and it starts here. Beginning of the game, Deontay Spencer back from an injury, and he returns this. He makes a poor decision to go east-west. Rather than getting upfield, he thinks that there's a cutback on the left side, and Las Vegas does a great job. This contained guy right here, number 85, these guys do a great job, right? Because it is kicked to the left, Las Vegas Raiders' left side. So the right side, guys, they have to converge and be contain help all across the board. And he doesn't get too far inside, which is great. Now he tracks, which means that he's stepping vertically, climbing, vertically, climbing, vertically, climbing. This is just a special teams play here. He does a great job right here. And he stems it. Deontay Spencer tries to go backside. You never want to do that. You never want to go backwards. You always want to go forward. The Broncos, they're going to get tackled right here at the four-yard line. There's also going to be a penalty on them as well. So the Broncos start their first offensive series on the three-yard line. That was the start of this game. The Broncos on this play design scheme up Noah Fant to be open very quickly. Jerry Judy at the top of your screen right here. He's just going to run a little bit of an over route. Philip Lindsay's going to run an out route here. You're going to have KJ Hamler. He's going to run a corner. Tim Patrick's going to run a sit. And then Noah Fant's going to run a little bit of a flat route here. And this is just a quick design. Good job by the Broncos offensive line. Clean pocket, quick throw, nine-yard gain there by Noah Fant. He's going to pick up uh, good yardage here. And the Broncos have had a long uh, standing issue this season of being consistent on first down. They've always had a tendency to go backwards. And as you can see, you've got a one technique right here. You've got wide right here. Inside backer is going to fill this gap. Uh, Nick's going to fill right here. You're going to have a three tech right here. Uh, Max Crosby, obviously a guy you have to always watch out for. Noel Fant isn't really going to do too much here because he's releasing to the flat. So that means that they are protecting inside out. And so you're more than likely to have a one-on-one -on -one here. Uh, man alignment, you're going to have outside alignment here. And then a safety over the top by the Las Vegas Raiders. And right there, that's a zone coverage. Looks like it's a cover two altogether there. It's going to be a pickup by Noel Fant. That's not bad. It's a fast designing play. The Broncos need to go with that a little bit more. The Broncos only gave Phillip Lindsay the ball four times in this game. Four carries, two yards. Four carries for the type of player that Phillip Lindsay is is inexcusable, in my opinion. Here's an early play. They're going to motion Tim Patrick down the line of scrimmage, and he's going to try to crack block here. Uh, but there's going to be a fill-in by a blitzing player here on this run play. And you're going to see Tim Patrick right here. This guy's going to come free. There's really no lane for Philip Lindsay on the interior at all to be able to run it in. He has no alley right there. And 50 is going to make the play to kind of clean it up there. So the Broncos on this play, look, you got to stick with the run game. Okay, that play didn't really work out in your favor. You get two yards falling forward. But the Broncos have had a tendency to abandon the run game. Okay, and at this point of the game, guess what? It is seven to zero. All right. But the issue that I have with Denver is that it was 10-6 at halftime. They went away from the run game late in that second quarter. They found themselves getting pass happy. Once again, you're going to have a slanted one technique. You're going to have a three technique here. And you're going to have Max Crosby in a six eye, which means he's on the inside shoulder of the tight end. So these guys right here, he's going to block. He's going to block. They're going to double team this guy initially. He's going to have to step. He's going to step down. And he's got. if this guy fills, Dalton Rides are going to have to pick him up. And then you've got a one-on-one -on -one right here. Outside guy, so Garrett Bowles is going to block him right here. The Broncos just have to find a way. Look at the splits, too, in between Lloyd Cushenberry and Graham Glasgow. That's a pretty wide split there. It feels like it's a little bit wider than everybody else in the offensive line. 
Let's see what happens. There's no pole, so they're stepping down. Everyone's blocking down. Tim Patrick's cracking the blitzing safety. And the only lane here for Philip Lindsay, look, this is right here. This is too skinny. He's not going to be able to run through that. So, of course, his lane that he's going to look for is the cutback right here. But number 50, because there's so many people crowding the line of scrimmage, it's going to be where this cornerback's going to come up, the safety's going to come up. I mean, not the safety, the linebacker's going to come up. And it's going to be an issue for Philip Lindsay to be able to get positive yardage. That's just the Raiders planning to stop the run. They wanted to dare the Broncos to pass, and we're going to get into that here in a second. Once the Broncos got into some of their quick-hitting offense, I think there were some good things that happened for them all together. This could be a design to Tim Patrick. Uh, this is a pass play here, but you're going to see Graham Glasgow. He's actually going to pull from the right side to the left to help out. He and Phillip Lindsay are going to pass protect off the edge right here from these guys. And what you're going to see is Jerry Judy is going to step, come across. It looks like he gets held by this cornerback right here. Tim Patrick's going to come right about here and catch the ball for the first down. No offense, going to release vertically. You're going to have a block, 1-1001 one, 1, chip release to the flat here by Nick Vanette on this play. But this is a quick design. Play action. Get the ball to your playmakers quickly. Now, here's the deal. This guy right here, uh, Nick Vanette, he's occupied. The guy coming free, Noah Fant, is the vertical threat with a corner over the top and a safety behind him. So guess what? You have your two inside backers holding each other's hands, playing grab ass, and you have this open field right here for Tim Patrick. Drew Locke does a great job timing-wise, throwing the ball, finding Patrick. 14-yard gain here on the play. I don't know why, but the Broncos' quick-hitting offense seems to be a lot more effective than when they take a, a, just a simple drop back. They have to process the field. These are quick designs, and it has to build everything else on top of it. So there you go. You have your extra protection against Cleo Farrell right there. Um, as you can see right here, a little bit of a grab right here by number 26. Felt like the Raiders' DBs were a little grabby. Uh, but then Noah Fant is the guy that's freeing up Tim Patrick. Drew Locke releases the ball on time. Clean pocket altogether out on the rollout, and it's going to be a first down. Jerry Judy continues to put on a clinic against press coverage in terms of his route running. He's going to run a route that's all the way here. He's going to sit because you're going to have off coverage. He's going to bail. You're going to have this guy playing underneath. You're going to have a zone coverage, and Jerry Judy does a great job of identifying that this is a two-man route. you got Nick Vanette in here blocking. You're going to bring Noah Fanton underneath the formation to also block on the backside, and Philip Lindsay is going to be a late leak-out addition. But this is a design to Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy gets open, and KJ Hamler here also gets open. So if you want to rewind it to after uh, you watch Jerry Judy up at the top right here, Rewind it to watch what KJ Hamler does. He gets open as well. Right now you have both guys. They are open vertically. You have a middle drop here by this linebacker. You have your two high safety look. There, it looks like the Raiders are playing a lot of cover two. And so Jerry Jew is going to sit right here in the soft spot. KJ Hamler is also going to do the same exact thing. He's going to get open and throttle down. And Drew Locke does a good job of finding Jerry Judy in a little bit of a window. Judy does a good job protecting himself and moves the chains for a first down. Denver had a promising drive here. And so their offense really looked stagnant afterwards. Not quite sure what all attributed to that. Negative three yards in the third quarter. That's not going to be good enough. And as you mentioned, you got the protection there. You've got Lloyd Cushbury. He's got this one-on-one. -on -one. He has to deal with a uh, big number 90 right there on the interior. And right there, I mean, right, I feel like his footwork, look, he's allowing him to come inside. He's got a step and shield in front of him. Not sure if that's blocking scheme. Not sure if that's just a guy who's a lot quicker than him. But it's not bad enough to hurt the play there. But Jerry Judy finds a soft spot in zone coverage, and he gets the first down. The Broncos offensive line gives Drew Locke enough time on this play, in my opinion, to make a good throw here. KJ Hamler, he's going to run a stick out route right here, and then Deshaun's going to run the corner route. You can make the argument that number 25 for the Raiders hit him early. This could have been called pass interference. Should have been. It wasn't, but guess what? You're not going to get this in the NFL. Look, you don't even lobby. Deshaun right here, this is the only problem I have right here. Deshaun, I think, runs a great route, but he doesn't lobby for a call there. You lobby for a call, you may get that. The safety got there early. You can make the argument about pass interference, but unfortunately it wasn't called. You didn't help yourself by not lobbying for it as well. Take a look here. You're going to have, uh, for the Broncos against the defensive front for the Raiders, you're going to have a three technique. You're going to have a three technique wide, wide. And I think the Broncos offensive line, initially I think they do a pretty good job. They're stepping down right here to help. Uh, Johnson 31 is going to be coming up as well, seeing if uh, Melvin Gordon's going to be getting it. You have Tim Patrick on a crossing pattern right here all the way across the field. And you've got a good one-on-one -on -one Noel Fant on the outside. You've got these two guys, Dalton Reisner and uh, Garrett Bowles. They're not blocking anybody right now because I think this guy's going to be coming outside. He's trying to come inside. And Drew Locke has enough time to throw. Bam. Okay, there's a hit. You can make the argument maybe the ball is going a little bit over Deshaun's head, but you still got to lobby for a pass interference call. Fortunately, the Broncos, they had to uh, go ahead and kick a field goal after this. 
Max Crosby was the one defensive player I said the Broncos really have to account for, especially at the right tackle position. Here is Calvin Anderson. He got his first career start here. Seems like there's a miscommunication. He doesn't know exactly what's going on in this play. From the looks of it, he takes an outside step, and then Max Crosby at the snap takes inside. He gets a free release at Phillip Lindsay, makes a tackle for a loss in the backfield. This was one of the big errors I think that Calvin Anderson in his first career start made. Broncos head coach Vic Fangio says he thought he played pretty well outside of a couple of plays. So there's some promising things to maybe build off here. But clearly on this one, it feels like he miscommunicated where he was supposed to go. Let's see what alignment the Las Vegas Raiders are in defensively here. So you see you've got a one technique. You've got an apex in between a 4-I and a 3. So he's playing the apex there. And then Crosby right here, he's playing in a 6-I on uh, Nick Vanette on the inside. And really all he does, I feel like at this point, he's going to try to reach him. And Crosby, I don't think he anticipates that Crosby is slanting inside quickly here. And I think this is where the issue comes in. Just got to be a little bit more disciplined. It feels like this was intended right here to be a reach block to the outside. He does not anticipate he's going to cut inside. And it leads to this play here, especially based on his alignment. You would anticipate he's going to strike upfield, but no, he has a quick first step on the inside. That's a good play by Crosby. It's a second and 14 here for the Denver Broncos. You have a two-by-two two formation. You're going to have a route right here. It looks like the um, the Raiders on this one, before I get to the routes, it looks like they're playing cover three to this side of the field, and they're playing man on this side because you have a one-on-one -on -one here, and then you have Abram on the tight end, and then you have your single high safety, Heath. I don't like that guy. Uh, not my favorite candy bar either, the Heath bar. Ain't, ain't nothing good about it. Uh, but either way, you're going to see the route here, and you're going to see a crossing pattern. You're going to see a dig route, and you're going to see a corner route by Noah Fant here. And it's a second and 14. So the Broncos, they're just trying to make it to our third down. If they can get positive yardage, it won't be as mismanageable in this situation. Philip Lindsay going to be the leak out guy here. You could tell based on this right here that he's playing cover two. He's going to be playing the flat. He's going to be playing whoever comes here. And then you've got this cornerback playing deep. Jerry Jew is going to break right here, so he's going to break on the route. And you have your single high safety crossing pattern here. Tim Patrick is the open guy, so Drew Locke on this play actually goes through his read. He looks left to right, sees Tim Patrick. Well-placed football right here. It falls incomplete. It's going to bring up a third and 14, which is going to lead to an interception. That's going to be the next play we talk about here on the film review. I wanted to take a look at the pass protection here once again for the Denver Broncos. I feel like they do a really good job here. Now, here's the pre-snap look. Jonathan Abram, he's going to walk up. Okay, so they could be blitzing five. They could be dropping him back. They're obviously going to drop Abram back, and they're going to send four here. And they're going to cross face, and I think the Broncos offensive line does a really good job of giving Drew Locke time on this play to go through his reads. Now, I'm going to pause it, right? Garrett Bowles passes off this guy on the inside. He's coming to the outside. Seems like they have that communication. Lloyd Cushenberry, his eyes are looking for anything coming over here. Max Crosby going to step on the inside. 97 is coming up field right here. So you're going to see that. He does a good job. Reisner stepping down here on Farrell. Lloyd Cushbury is going to step down here. And you're also going to get some help here from Calvin Anderson coming back inside on Crosby. Broncos give Drew Locke a clean pocket. This is going to fall incomplete. It is Drew Locke's first interception of the game here. It is third and 14. Jerry Judy is going to run vertical release. You're going to see an out route here by uh, Royce Freeman. You're going to have a block, 1-1001. One, one, check out by uh, Troy Fumagalli, and it's just going to be a double post pattern right here. You can even argue this one's a dig from Tim Patrick up at top, but K.J. Hamler, luckily he didn't get seriously hurt on this play. This is just a bad throw by Drew Locke. Offensive line gives him uh, time to be able to do it, but I want you to see here, okay, K.J. Hamler's the intended target right here is the one who gets thrown to. you got man coverage right here, safety playing over the top, and you have another safety that's playing Kind of the delta. We call that a triangle, right? So almost kind of that delta bracket, so to speak here. You can see he's playing underneath, which means he's expecting help over the top. And that's exactly where he's going to come in. This safety right here does a great job reading Drew Locke and getting over the top quickly. And Drew Locke is going to airmail this into one, two, three, triple coverage. There is no window on this throw unless it's absolutely perfect. But this guy is five foot nine, right? If it's Cortland Sutton at six foot four, maybe you make that throw. But this is five foot nine KJ Hamler underneath, over the top, over the top, coming over. And this is a hospital ball. He's going to go up. This safety is going to hit Hamler at his legs. Hamler's going to flip, land on his back. It is intercepted. This was arguably one of Drew Locke's worst throws this season in terms of the timing, the need, and also the trajectory. Triple coverage. You can't throw into double coverage. You can't throw into triple coverage on third and 14. You have to take what the defense gives you. And this was not a very good decision by Drew Locke. And this is only going to be a four-man rush out of the Raiders' dime package. You're going to have this guy rushing. 
You're going to have the head up guy in the zero tech. You're going to have him. And then Jonathan Abrams going to come all the way across and blitz as well. Uh, the Broncos do a really good job of giving him time. You're going to have these guys step in, Graham Glasgow and Calvin Anderson. They are protecting here against 94. Lloyd Cushenberry is stepping down, crashing down number 99. Jonathan Abrams is going to come backside. Dalton Reiser is going to pick him up. And then you got Troy Fumagalli chip releasing there on Crosby. Garrett Bowles will then have a one-on-one -on -one against him. And look, that's a clean pocket. This is a clean pocket, and Locke's going to throw it into harm's way. Gosh, KJ Hamler, luckily he is okay, but this is a bad decision here by Drew Locke, and this was uh, just one of the many bad decisions we saw from him on Sunday. Now, in Sunday's game, the Broncos ran a play here on third and one, a play action. Drew Locke gets sacked, fumbles the ball, and you had to wonder. I think everybody was wondering, why didn't the Broncos run the ball here? I see what they were doing. I preferably would have wanted them to run the ball, but look at this box here. It is stacked all across the board with everybody. Jonathan Abram coming up, and then you have one-on-one, one-on-one, -on -one, and then a single high. So you had guys that were really playing against the run here. So the Broncos knew that the Raiders were going to be aggressive, which is why they tried to take a chance, and they tried to free Tim Patrick up on the drag pattern, uh, crossing pattern across the field here. But Drew Locke gets sacked off of the right side, and there's just more pressure, more guys than the Broncos have in terms of coverage and protection. Drew Locke fumbles the ball. Luckily, he's able to recover it, but the Broncos, now they're inside the three-yard line, folks. This was a trend for Denver all night consistently on Sunday in their loss against the Raiders here. So let's take a look here. You are having a tight end come out here. You're going to have a block right here. You have to protect. You have to have somebody to hit this guy. Melvin Gordon's going to have to protect as well. Somebody comes free, folks. And Melvin Gordon is focused now here, which means that he's coming off free here. You got a good one-on-one -on -one right here. Dalton Reisner helping down with Lloyd Cushenberry. I like this extension by the Broncos right here on the three. Cushenberry, you have Glasgow, and you have Anderson protecting on the interior one-on-one -on -one here. But then there's another guy coming free. And as you can see the design, you're going to have vertical by Noah Fant, crosser by Jerry, crosser by Tim. And Tim's going to come open because this linebacker is caught in no man's land right here. So you can see, oh, right there! Ah, oh, if Drew Locke has more time right here, he finds Tim Patrick. He's going to catch it, get upfield for a big-time gain. He gets sacked, and he goes down here inside the three-yard line. That is a story for the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos come out in an empty formation right here, and this is going to be the play where Arden Key blasts Drew Locke, and this is my concern with Locke. On this one, he's just staring down one read, right? You've got two receiving threats out here, but he stares down completely to the right side, whether it's Jerry Judy or whether it's K.J. Hamler here. And what you're going to see by design, Jonathan Abram's going to walk up. They're going to send five. They're going to send Jonathan Abram on the inside right here, Arden Key to the outside, and they're going to send these three other down linemen initially, and you're going to have these guys playing coverage all together here. And then this linebacker's going to take a deep drop to this area right here, and you're going to have middle protection, middle hook right here, deep right here by uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. But because Jonathan Abram's coming inside or from the outside to the inside, Garrett Bowles has him one-on-one. -on -one. Noah Fant's going to be releasing, so that means Arden Key is coming free. Drew Locke staring down only one side of the field right here. He's going to hold on to the ball a little too long. Now he's got a free release. I get it. He, this is designed to be a quick throw. Supposed to fire it right about now. But as you can see, there's this defender right here, so maybe that leads to the hesitation. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I wasn't aware of what the play call was myself because I'm not in the offensive room here. But Arden Key is going to come free. He's going to absolutely blast Drew Locke. And as you've seen, there was a little bit of a pump, a little bit of a hesitation throw there. I'm going to show you that on the other angle there because you're probably going to see a little bit more clearly overall. But it's going to fall incomplete. This was a, a big issue for Denver. There was a couple times this game where Locke double pumped. He hesitated. You can't hesitate. you got to fire it. you got to rip it. Not to excuse that. Now look, one-on-one -on -one here with Abram. Good pass protection right here. One-on-one -on -one with Reisner Cushenberry helping inside right here. Graham Glasgow and Calvin Anderson, they're going to help right here. He's going to drop back. Arden Key's going to come free. And, God, I mean, really, right here, it's, it's a relatively clean pocket. But as you can see, look, on the other angle, it looked like this guy was a lot closer. If Drew fires this ball now, he's going to get cagey. He's going to get positive yardage. Watch him kind of pump that arm right there, and it's going to be incomplete. So he hesitates a second too much, and that's what cost the Broncos there. This is a very clean rep here by the Denver Broncos. Great protection, in my opinion, by the offensive line against pressure, against the blitz. Jerry Judy with an absolutely great route. A, we call that a post-corner in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Trayvon Mullen here. And this is a big-time game for the Broncos. I absolutely love this route. He's going to break him up inside, and then he's going to break outside right there. Lollipop, man. And then Drew Locke throws in anticipation. Good throw there by Locke, anticipating where his receiver is going to be. He's going to move the chains for a first down. Vic Fangio right here. 
Loving what he's seeing from the Broncos' first-round pick. Jerry Judy has been putting on a clinic this year, folks. And because the offensive struggles by the Broncos, you really wouldn't know if you're an outsider. But if you've been watching Broncos football, you know that Jerry Judy has been the guy for Denver. He's been the real deal. He's been as advertised. Now here in the pass protection, what you're going to see is inside track here. Garrett Bowles and Dalton Reiser are going to help here. Gla uh, Graham Glasgow is going to have this block right here. You're going to have Abram coming up on the inside. Pressure one-on-one -on -one right here with Calvin Anderson. I think the Broncos do a good job giving pressure. And then Nick Kowski, he's going to come through free here. Not really going to hit Drew Locke, though. Drew Locke's going to throw in anticipation. Great spot there for Jerry Jew. He's going to be a first down for Denver. See, that's some of the good about Drew Locke, but unfortunately, we're about to get some of the really bad. This play right here would be the negative snowball effect for this Denver Broncos team. You're going to fake the inside handoff field. Lindsey Drew Locke's going to keep it to the outside for a touchdown here. Noah Fant's going to be called for a hold on. Slap Dick Heath right here. I'm not a big fan of this. Look, I feel like I, I talked about earlier Deshaun Hamilton not selling for the PI, not not lobbying for it. This guy right here, he lobbies for the holding call. In my opinion, good contact here by Noel Fant. And look, I think he's driving his feet. Now, right here, he can still step off. I don't think he's necessarily being held. This is one of those ticky-tack calls. He holds his hand up, and the ref's going to throw that flag. There's a play later on in this game where Bradley Chubb gets evidently held in a worse way than that. They don't call the flag, and it leads to a Josh Jacobs touchdown. So, I don't know. I, I guess the NFL is being more selective. I mean, a, a Las Vegas would be in the more physical football team, but this was a turning point for the Broncos, especially against pressure. You see that coming here. You're going to keep it. And I, I don't know. I mean, you can make the argument he's a little bit outside, but there are going to be blocks where you are leaning to one side in comparison to the other. I mean, right there, I guess you can make the argument. But look, I, I think you've seen worse holding calls than that. And this was a turning point for the Broncos. Unfortunately, it cost them because Drew Locke, we're going to see that play coming up next, what happens. Drew Locke would take a massive step back after this play here. I'm going to show you the route combinations. Jerry Judy's going to run a post or a slant here, out route by KJ, and he's going to vertical. Almost kind of like a sit pattern here against this cornerback here. The Raiders, they are in their dime package. If you can tell, they have six defensive backs on the field altogether here. And so what's going to happen on this play is that you're going to have KJ run the out. Like I said here, Drew Locke doesn't even look to the right side of the field here. The offensive line, in my opinion, does a really good job giving Locke time to throw here. Broncos still have timeouts, but let's watch the play develop right about here. No offense coming vertically, so guess what? Linebacker is going to get depth. Safety is going to be over the top here. And then you're just going to see this delta coverage. Philip Lindsay being a leak out guy. I mean, he could throw it, but this cornerback's going to play it really hard. If you want to get positive yardage to maybe have a good situation with maybe like seven seconds left, six seconds, then the Broncos might have a chance. But he's going to throw this into harm's way. He's going to throw this because the safety's reading it the entire way. He's going to jump it. He's going to intercept it. And Heath looked like an all pro. Now, I want you to focus your sights, gentlemen and ladies, to the right side of the field here. Like I mentioned, the out, the vertical. If Drew Locke looks to his right and throws it quickly, he's going to get KJ Handler on the speed out. Tim Patrick could block this guy one-on-one, -on -one, and you might have a touchdown here. He stares down Jerry Judy, though. He doesn't look for it, and these guys were wide open because this guy's playing too far off into the end zone. This guy played too far inside. Broncos had an advantage here, two-on-one, or you could say 2v2, but this was a big, big mistake here by Drew Locke. And instead of them going up 13-10, to they go into halftime down 10-6 to in this matchup. You don't even come away with the field goal in this situation. That's the big thing for the Broncos. And so let's take a look at Drew Locke here. This is just forcing the ball into unnecessary traffic. You can't take that risk. He doesn't really let the right side process in terms of the route concepts. He looks at Noel Fant for a brief moment and then looks back to the, the middle of the field, but he's already winding this arm up right here. He's going to deliver that into this window because this linebacker is going to step here. Safety is going to step up. He's going to jump it the entire time. I mean, this is just clear as day, a, a ball you do not want to throw. And I, I just don't know. I, his decision-making, he's regressed a little bit. And I said it on the podcast, Lockdown Broncos on your favorite podcast provider every day. Drew Locke's deficiencies, the things that are hurting the Broncos, they're hurting the team more than the flashes that he's showing is helping the team, if you know what I'm saying there. That right there was costly. That is a turning point of this game for this Denver Broncos football team. And Drew Locke's going to have to make better decisions, or else he may not be the guy in 2021. This will be Drew Locke's third interception of the game. It is a backbreaker for the Broncos, and he stares down Noah Fant from the onset of this play here. Raiders are going to send five. One, two, three, four, five. 
They're going to stand, jam, drop Carl Nassib back, and he's going to play middle spy here in the middle of the field here, and that's Nick Kowski, uh, whatever, however you pronounce his name here. And Drew Locke, like I said, he's going to stare at Nofant the entire time. You're going to see a vertical release here by KJ. Tim Patrick's going to run a smoke route. He's going to be wide open because this cornerback's playing so far off coverage, and Drew Locke just stares at Nofant. He doesn't see him here. I mean, Drew Locke, if he, if he turns right now, he can throw that ball to Tim Patrick quickly. No offense. I mean, he's looking. He sees Nassib underneath. He sees this linebacker over the top here. You got coverage right here, and he thinks he's still going to throw this out route too. No offense. Noah's not going to be open. He's never open on here. Drew Locke doesn't go through his reads and progressions. Pressure comes in his face. He throws a pick, throwing off of his back foot, and this is just the type of play where the Broncos may not lose um, any kind of investment in Drew Locke. He was a second-round quarterback, but they may lose their hope that he could be the guy because he is not showing any signs of growth here. He is taking steps back. His regression is hurting the team. And I want you to just stare at his helmet. Stare at his helmet here. He's going to stare at no fan. And I don't like to break Drew Locke's balls here. I don't like to bust his chops. But I have to call it fairly. He's making mistakes that are hurting this football team that's putting a lot of pressure on the Broncos' defense. Watch from the onset. Carl Nassib, jam, release. He's going to step back with him, but watch his helmet. It doesn't shift from Noah Fant. Pressure coming in his face. Guess what? You got a guy right here. Noah Fant's not going to be open. So he throws it directly to the dropping defensive end. Throws it inside, for that matter. Didn't even throw it to the outside. Throws it inside. It's intercepted. Very, very costly. This is Drew Locke's fourth interception of the game here. The Raiders, they're going to send six at him here. They're going to send six altogether. One, two, three, four, five and six. They're going to drop Nick Kowski back. Safety over the top. Man-to-man -to -man coverage right here. Man coverage, man coverage. And all you're going to see is Drew Locke. He's going to throw this ball on the inside. Troy Fumagalli is going to release and try to come inside. He's going to throw it to the outside where Nick Kowski is going to come up with an interception here. And, you know, yeah, pressure in your face. We're going to get to the offensive line here in just a moment, but this is just a not-so-good throw. Throwing off of his back foot, once again, kind of doing that fadeaway throw fourth interception of the day. Broncos country right now is deflated. Broncos fans in my mentions on Twitter have been absolutely deflated with what's going on. People who are on the fence about Drew Locke, they're suddenly off the fence now. And the decision making has not helped his case here. So I want to show you guys real quick the pressure coming off here. Okay, You're going to have your initial offensive line. You have five man protection and then you're going to have your running back in to help. Garrett Bowles is going to have a one on one right here initially because he's coming outside. You got this defensive tackle hesitation stepping inside. Dalton Reisner is peeking to make sure that if this guy comes in, he can step and help here. But now you got a guy coming here, Lloyd Cushenberry. He's already through. So the expectation is that Royce Freeman is going to pick up this guy and he does and he goes low. He chop blocks him or cut blocks him. I don't want to say chop block and then he's supposed to step over here. That means that you have a 101 right here with Graham Glasgow against this guy, but you got number 99 stepping wide out here. So Calvin Anderson is taking him. You got your late blitzing safety, then coming on the interior right here. So you ha you don't have enough guys to account for the overall protection. That's going to lead to pressure. Initially, everything is taken care of except the free guy, the free blitzing safety, going to hit Drew Locke. This ball's thrown to the outside, one handed interception. That sums up the Broncos' day in Las Vegas, folks. Not a very pretty debut for Denver in Allegiant Stadium.